Business Review, a daily program that delves into the latest and most significant economic stories. From stock markets to currency news, Business Review covers the most up-to-date developments in the global financial world. The clothing and textile sector is considered one of the pioneering sectors in Palestine, whether in economic forms, in terms of employment, export, production and investment, or in terms of the ability to progress and prosper. The clothing sector in the Gaza Strip produces a wide range of formal and informal clothing for all ages and sizes for both unisex. In addition to Palestinian folklore clothing in different shapes, models and colors. And some factories produce supplies for hospitals and hotels, such as sheets, blankets and others, in addition to textile products of all kinds. This factory was established in the year 2000 and it contains about 40 workers. We export our clothes to Ramallah and Hebron. We usually get our raw material from China and Turkey. Making the clothes in Gaza costs us less prices than exporting them from China. Our problem is with the taxes we have to pay for, they are triple. 17 garment manufacturers have returned to work in the Gaza Strip since the beginning of 2019, employing between 350 and 400 workers in this sector, which has suffered huge losses over the past years. The head of the Federation of the Clothes and Textile Industry in Gaza said that the return of these factories to work raised the number of factories working in the clothing and textile sector to 177 factories that are fully operating in the Strip, noting that these factories occupy a rate of 5,000 to 6,000 workers. When we make clothes in the Gaza Strip, it costs us much less. We get high quality material from abroad and we work with it to manufacture it here. This way, lots of workers are employed and the piece doesn't cost as much as the imported one and all levels of the community are then able to buy clothes with excellent quality. The clothing industry has improved significantly as total sales during the first half of last year amounted to about $3 million, especially after Israel provided some facilities and merchants and operators granted special permits to enable them to sell their products. The total percentage of sales in the period between 2015 and 2018 reached about $17 million for these factories operating in the Gaza Strip after the occupation allowed about 60 factories to operate as a service performer for the Israeli market or the West Bank. Gaza Strip used to export clothes to Europe and Israel, but today there are fewer companies that are able to export their products. If this sector is being supported and more raw materials are allowed in addition to lifting the siege, it will certainly flourish more and expand to better economy. Regarding the difficulties facing the clothing and textile sector, the blackout and the prevention of the arrival of some raw materials and equipment by the Israeli occupation are among the main obstacles facing the factories operating in the Strip. The average daily wage for workers in the garment and textile industries in Gaza is about 60 shekels, with a monthly salary between 1,500 and 2,000 shekels. For KTV2, this is Business Review Program, Yumna Sayyid, Gaza, Palestine. As South Korea's coronavirus cases leapt to more than 5,000, mask-wearing workers at a logistics center run by e-commerce firm Copan Corp raced to disinfect trucks and load thousands of boxes of microwavable rice, disposable diapers, and kitchen towels. Even before the epidemic, South Korea is expected to become the world's number three e-commerce market this year after China and the United States. According to Euromonitor, a remarkable statistic for a nation of just 51.7 million, 
Now as the country emerges as a critical hotspot in the global epidemic with the most cases outside of China, its shift to online shopping is only gathering speed. Coupon delivery man Zhang said he's just focused on getting necessities to people isolated at home, despite worries over his wife, with whom he's just had a baby. Coupon, which has secured $3 billion in investment from SoftBank and its Vision Fund, has seen deliveries climb to 3 million daily since mid-February, from around 2.2 million per day late of last year. But the surge in orders mostly for low-margin goods such as household items and fresh produce may be a double-edged sword, as delivery costs also balloon, potentially setting the 10-year-old firm even further back in its quest for profitability. Japan's Olympics minister said the country is committed to hosting the Summer Games as planned from the month of July, even as the coronavirus outbreak spreads to new parts of the country. The minister had caused controversy earlier this week by saying the contract for the Games could be interpreted as allowing a postponement within calendar 2020. Tokyo residents, however, said they disagreed with the plan, voicing their opinions clearly. According to national broadcaster NHK, Japan's total confirmed coronavirus cases rose to 1,036. Nestle SA is launching a reforestation project to plant at least 3 million trees in Mexico and Brazil. In the next year and a half, as the Swiss food group strives for carbon neutrality by 2050, Nestle is one of a number of major corporations, including Microsoft and Amazon, that have taken on ambitious targets to reduce carbon emissions, often a response to growing demands from customers and investors to step up efforts to combat climate change. In September, Nestle, whose products range from Kit Kat chocolates to Nescafe coffee, Cheerio cereal and pollen spring bottled water signed a United Nations backed pledge aimed at limiting global temperature rise and said it would adjust its business to prioritize renewable energy, alternative packaging materials, and carbon absorption. At a cost of $1 to $15 per tree, the first phase of Nestle's reforestation project could cost as much as $45 million US dollars for planting alone. Nestle's chief executive for the Americas said the project would be a starting point for further efforts to protect the environment in places like Mexico, where the company sources coffee, cacao, sugar, and dairy products. The company is working with non-profit One Tree Planted to determine which types of trees to plant and where, with Mexico's southeastern states of Tabasco and Veracruz among the options. The carbon captured by the first million trees would eventually be enough to offset the emissions of a coffee processing plant expected to start operating in October in Veracruz, said Nestle's head of operations. The $154 million US dollars plant is expected to process 20,000 tons of coffee per year and employ 250 people directly. When it is fully up and running, its use of technology, automation and clean energy would make it a model among Nestle's factories. The project was touted in 2018 by Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador as the first major investment announcement under his administration and a source of direct and indirect jobs that would push Mexico to become Nestle's top coffee producer. Stitch by stitch, bottle by bottle, a granny from Yangon, Wendy Niampui, is turning trash into fashionable apparel. The 68-year-old owner of an upcycle shop called Choo Choo House, named after the Burmese for plastic house, recycles what she can from the mountains of trash that engulf landfills across her city. Niyampi said she learned the technique from the internet to iron plastic sheets together to create a type of synthetic fabric 
that she and her staff use for their products, belts cut from tires and handicraft bags sewed from instant coffee packets are among the many colorful creations on sale at Niampi shop in Dala, one of the poorest suburban townships in Myanmar's largest city. Niampi started her upcycling project in 2014 and founded Choo Choo House in 2016. She also runs an educational program to help local women learn how to upcycle. She hopes her efforts in recycling will leave a cleaner environment for her four grandchildren to grow up in. Niyampi said that the upcycling business isn't easy as attracting customers has proven to be hard work. But for those who are environmentally conscious, such as German tourist Sana, an upcycled elephant is a magical souvenir from her vacation. According to the Yangon City Development Committee, it collects more than 2,500 tons of waste per day from 5 million residents in Yangon. Only about 2,000 tons can fit in the landfill site. Business Review, your daily source for the most critical financial stories. Tune in next time for the latest financial news impacting the world economy.